So in this video, we're going to focus on the creation of a burst wave. And this is really the first part of our final solution for a fully automatic burst wave weapon. Now, I keep saying burst. Why am I saying burst? Well, if you recall, the original problem we had when we created the wave weapon was that we did not enforce our fire interval, which meant that the fire interval could be exceeded, which would result in our fire count being reset. And that would, of course, mess up our pattern because the fire count is extremely important so that we always knew exactly which step we were on so that we could calculate the proper angles. The other thing was that the pattern could be interrupted. A player could simply stop firing before a pattern was complete. From there, though, we moved into the creation of a burst weapon. And with the burst weapon, if you recall, and I'll just use three projectiles as my example, though I believe, Logan, in your coding you used four. But we will ensure that our fire interval is respected as well as the pattern being respected as well. So if you were to stop firing before these three projectiles were released, you would still have three properly spaced projectiles based on our fire interval. So at this point, we can start taking a look at how we can kind of merge these guys together. So with our burst, you guys recall that we had a cue so that we could keep track of how many more projectiles we had to fire off. Well, if we had our cue more or less driving our fire count, we could generate a burst wave weapon that had all of the characteristics of the burst weapon so that, once again, we're respecting our fire interval as well as our pattern but we get the wave results. So now that we have all of our projectiles there properly spaced with the correct direction and angle, et cetera, et cetera. So that is the goal of this video. This is going to be very straightforward. You're going to pretty much recognize 99.9% .9 of the code. There's really only one new line, and that is the line for basically fire count, where fire count's now being driven by Q. So there's going to be some interesting stuff going on there, but Logan's going to walk you through the numbers uh, by simply debugging the app as it's running. Now, again, this is the first part of a two-part solution to our fully automatic wave weapon because this is going to allow us to have a burst weapon that sends out bursts of this particular pattern right here, but we still don't have the fully automatic solution, and we'll talk about that in the next video. So I want everybody to keep in mind that this is the first of a two-parter, okay? All right, well, let's jump into Visual Studio and get started. We've got our weapon burst, which we have just completed. So now let's turn our attention back to the game folder and make a new item for a weapon burst wave. And inside of this new weapon burst wave class, I'll begin with just a bit of namespace cleanup. I also want to grab a line to give a using statement for Microsoft.xna. I'll steal that from weapon auto wave. The reason I'm stealing it from here, I also want to point out that we're going to need quite a bit of code from the auto, the weapon auto wave class. A lot of the code that we had established here is still fully relevant and can now be used in the weapon burst wave. And the code you're referring to is all of the code dealing with the uh, calculation of our angles and basically getting that pattern that we saw over on the whiteboard. The calculation of our angles, the that utility method that allows yep. allowed us to rotate vectors and the bulk of the fire method itself. But um, back to the weapon burst wave, where we will have our weapon burst wave extend weapon burst. And inside of weapon burst, let's drop down a field that he's going to need. If you remember from weapon auto wave, we actually tracked a few things. We tracked wave total and we tracked wave spread. We allowed fire interval just to be based on the fact that this was a weapon auto. But out of these two, we only need to track one of these because if you look at wave total, remember that wave total was to give us a way of telling how many steps we would have in an overall wave. Well, if we're working on a burst weapon, we know how many steps are in the burst because we have the burst total. So this field is unnecessary if we're working inside of a burst weapon. I will, however, copy the float field for the wave spread because even inside of a burst weapon, we still need some additional information to track how much the wave spreads out. But with this field, we can now establish our constructor. 
So we'll drop in the public constructor for weapon burst wave. And it's going to need to take in several things, beginning with the standard ship parameter. From here, we'll drop in a double for fire interval. And this, of course, just a parameter to pass back up to weapon burst itself for its fire interval. After this, we have burst total, again, to satisfy the constructor of a burst weapon. And finally, we're going to have a float value for wave spread. Then we'll make our call to the base constructor, passing in the ship, the fire interval, and the burst total. Now there's one final field to establish, and that is to make sure that our wave spread parameter is saved into our wave spread field. So this dot wave spread equals wave spread, and now we have all of our fields set up. From here, we need to move into reestablishing the wave pattern that was originally created in Weapon Auto Wave. And a lot of this involves directly grabbing code from Weapon Auto Wave and moving it over. As a matter of fact, we're going to grab the entire rotate vector utility method. We'll simply copy it and paste it into Weapon Burst Wave. And here you might be thinking to yourself, well, why are we duplicating code here? Because now we've got two copies of identical code in rotate vector. The idea is that once this new solution is fully in place, we're going to simply remove Weapon Auto Wave since it has some very um, key flaws to it. So once we're done gaining information from Weapon Auto Wave, we won't need it anymore. So at the moment, everything in here can be considered temporary. We're using it only for reference at this point. But after Rotate Vector, we're going to put in an override to the fire method for the Weapon Burst Wave so that we can do all of the necessary calculations for firing wave pattern projectiles. I'm going to take out and remove the, uh, the call to base.fire. Now, once again, all this code is going to be very similar to Weapon Auto Wave. So what I'm going to do is go over to Weapon Auto Wave, where it had overridden the fire method. And I'm going to begin at the if statement that is checking fire count and copy both the if and else blocks of that if statement. Then inside of our new Weapon Burst Wave and its fire override, we'll paste all of that in. Now at this point, if we were to try to build, the compiler will point out a few problems that we have. So I'm going to build, and we'll note two things. One, fire count does not exist at the moment, and two, wave total does not exist. Wave total is much easier to fix because, again, wave total was to track how many steps there are in an overall wave, but being a burst weapon, we can track how many steps there are in the burst. And we're now basing the wave pattern off of the burst. So we can simply replace wave total with this dot burst total. And that makes that easy enough to fix. The next thing that we need to address is the fact that we're missing fire count. And really, we have two options at this point. One, we could add the necessary code, much as Weapon Auto Wave had, that added a separate fire count field, then initialized it, and then maintained and tracked it as it continued. But inside of Weapon Burst Wave, instead of making a completely separate fire count value, I would rather reuse the queue that is available with inside of Weapon Burst. If we go over to Weapon Burst, we see that we have this queue field, and its job is to track where we are within the burst fire. So it would be, in my now, now granted, you can go either way in this in this case, but in my opinion, I'd rather just reuse this data instead of coming up with a completely new data field, which does a very similar job. Now, we still need some way of gaining access to Q, because from this descendant of Weapon Burst, Q was a private field. So what I'm going to do to get fire count is I'm actually going to create a protected field inside of Weapon Burst. We'll make a protected integer property called fire count. And to begin with, I'm going to directly expose Q through a get accessor. So let's drop, actually, let me put all this on one line. If we return the value of this.q, that will in fact return a value that tracks where we are within the overall burst. But 
just to point out here that that's counting in the wrong direction. If you remember back from Weapon Auto Wave, fire count needs to count forward, starting at zero and then count on. So that means in the case of the four projectiles of our wave pattern, that means we get a fire count of zero, then one, then two, then three. Representing each of our steps. Exactly. In a burst weapon, Q gets immediately set to the highest value, to the burst total, and then counts down. So we would get a Q sequence of 4, then 3, then 2, then 1. So we're going to need to do some work on this value. But before we put all that in, let's first put it into place so that we can analyze and better adjust it. Also, that's why I'm using the Q value and then renaming it to fire count, is really the actual sequence of fire count is in fact different than Q. So we're going to expose Q with some adjustments via fire count. However, having fire count accessible now allows us to use it inside of weapon burst wave. If we simply capitalize fire count, we should now be looking at that protected property. And if we build, that takes care of all of our errors. So now we have this weapon burst wave, which, which actually compiles. I'm going to put this into place onto the ship, and we'll be able to see what the issue is with using the queue directly. On player ship, we can change our weapon burst to a weapon burst wave, and then jump through to the last parameter. I'll bring up the parameters list, and note that we can now re-add the wave spread value. So we'll look back into config and get wave fire spread. Now if we build, and then run, and hit the fire button, we can see that we definitely have some issues. Remembering how the pattern was originally supposed to look, this is almost the opposite of it. We start with the outer projectiles first and work our way in though we are getting a wave-like sequence, so we are making progress. Now the thing to figure out is to determine exactly why we're getting such an odd pattern. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set a breakpoint on the if statement that is checking fire count so that I can step through and watch the value of fire count. To do that with the breakpoint set, I'll run, hit the fire button, and that'll drop us out here at the breakpoint. Now we can expand our locals jump into the base for this weapon burst wave, which would be weapon burst, and we can look at fire count. So watch what's happening to fire count in the values, remembering that the original sequence we wanted was 0, 1, 2, 3. Well, we're starting at 4, and if I hit F5, we'll, we'll continue running back to this point because we're going to continue hitting fire count until we run out of this burst. So we watch 4, down here on fire count, 3, 2, 1, and that ends our sequence and we resume playing. So we have a sequence of 4, 3, 2, 1, which makes sense because we're directly using the queue. So that means we're going to need to do some adjustments. One, we know we're going to need to invert this, so we count up instead of down. And two, we're also going to have to offset it some because we need 0 through 3 instead of 1 through 4. But before we put those offsets in place, I want to point out one final thing that might not be immediately apparent. Remember that in Weapon Burst, if the button is pressed again, we can actually extend the queue past burst total. We can add an, a second burst total to the first, and that allows us to stack another wave in place onto the queue. So in order to show what's happening there, I'm going to go to player, and I'm going to re-enable our firing stress test. That's again down in the input of the player class. That calls our weapons, or excuse me, our ships start fire every single tick. If I do this, and set our breakpoint back inside of weapon, excuse me, weapon burst wave, and run. We see that immediately we hit the breakpoint, but that makes sense since every tick is now calling start fire. We watch our value. Okay, that makes sense. It starts at four, it goes down, and then it jumps up to six. Reason being is we have to elapse at least one of the timer counts in order for the queue to get low enough to allow us to stack another volley onto the burst fire. But we do see that the total is in fact going above burst total. Now, to account for this, the fact that we're stacking multiple burst totals together in Weapon Burst, that sequence can be patched up by simply using modulus, because that way we can make a repeating sequence out of a larger continuing sequence. So what that would mean is, would be to simply take this dot Q, modulus against this dot burst total. If we do that, make and ensure that we still have our breakpoint set here in Weapon Burst Wave, now we get a fire count of 0, 3, 2, 1.
Now, while this is keeping us in range, we never hit the full value of Q. We're here, it's 5, so we're not exceeding, but you'll notice one other problem. Let me s begin the debug session over again so we can see the order in which things are playing out. Now our sequence is 0, 3, 2, 1. What's happening here is that rollover point within the modulus repeating sequence is, uh, is on the wrong side. We actually hit the rollover point immediately instead of at the end. We can fix this by simply offsetting the value that we're working with. That would mean if we took Q and subtracted one from it before applying the modulus burst total, that would, that would alter the sequence such that our rollover point would be at the end of the sequence instead of at the beginning. To show that, we can go back into our breakpoint and run, and now we get four, or excuse me, fire count of three, two, one, zero. So now we are progressing completely through, and the rollover point is at the very end, back around three. So working much better now. The next thing to address is the fact that we are still counting down, and we need to be counting up in order for fire count to work properly. That means we need to invert the sequence. So to do that, what we're going to do is simply subtract the final result from burst total, and that should invert the sequence. So this dot burst total minus what we have so far. Also, one other thing I'm going to do to make it easier to count, because at this point it's going to be helpful to correlate the Q back to the burst total, so I'm going to go into player and remove our stress test of fire count since we know we have already accounted for the possible rollover. So let me make sure the breakpoint is set in weapon burst wave. Hit the fire button. And now let's take a look at what our sequence is doing. We start with a fire count of 1, go up to 2, 3, and 4. Well, we have inverted the sequence. We now count forwards instead of backwards, but we're starting on the wrong number again. We're starting at going, starting going 1 through 4 instead of 0 through 3. But at this point, it is a lot easier to fix because we are only one off. If we offset by one, we will finally be at the correct sequence. That means, and what this comes down to is the value we're getting from this part of the calculation is the sequence 0, 1, 2, 3, and we're all subtracting burst total, which is 4, from that. So that's where 4 minus 0 is 4, and then 4 minus 1 is still yeah, remaining. That's where we get three. our inversion from. So if we subtract 1, from burst total, then we should have taken off that one extra, because right now we're offset one too high. So if we subtract one away from the overall, we should now be able to go in here, watch the sequence upon firing, and get a sequence of fire count. Zero. One, two, three, and we finish. Firing again. Zero, one, two, three. Perfect. So with that, let's take and remove our breakpoint run the game, and see what the visual result is now. Ah, much better. We have our original wave pattern, but it is now operating as a burst weapon. That means we have our two original issues with the weapon auto wave fixed. The first is the fact that we cannot interrupt the sequence. One press results in a full series of projectiles. So no matter where we stop firing, that last burst is going to complete. The other thing is that the burst weapon will um, will ensure that the fire interval cannot be exceeded. We can prove that by going back into player and re-enabling our start fire stress test. And we can see that while we're firing automatically, we are not exceeding that fire interval. And we're also not messing around with any value where we had been originally, meaning we were resetting the fire count, causing only a single projectile instead of a wave to be spawned, we can see that we're getting the full wave pattern even if we call start fire an excessive number of times. Now, I will point out that there is still one step remaining to get all the way to the final solution, and that is the fact that our original solution was fully automatic. So while we have fixed two issues, we have actually lost one ability, and that is the fully automatic ability. If we hold down the fire button, we only get a single volley of projectiles. We'd like to be able to regain the original ability of having an automatic continuous volley of projectiles. And we'll get to that in the upcoming video. Very good. And with that, that wraps up this video. Thanks a lot.